So we're going to talk a little bit about the second very um, common problem in Poisson regression, and that's excessive zeros or zero inflation. And essentially what this is, is when there are more zeros, okay, or more non-events, no occurrences of the event, than expected. So to try and draw a picture of what that would look like, it's essentially saying, here's the, let's think of the number of visits to a physician in a year, so that's the example we've been looking at. So the number of visits are zero, or one, or two, or three, or four, and so on. And on this axis is the frequency. And for a nice theoretical Poisson distribution, we'd expect to see something like this. Some zeros, some ones, two, three, four, and so on. Some nice smoothish looking distribution. Okay. And so on. It doesn't necessarily need to peak at zero. Okay. It can have its peak somewhere else. Um, yeah. But so here, this is like a nice kind of nice smooth shape that we um, expect to see. And what excessive zeros are is when say we have over here the number of zeros being actually much higher than we expect it to be. Right? We expect it to be this sort of nice smooth shape, and there's a lot of extra here. A common reason for seeing this okay, is that. There's two processes at work. I mean, let me try saying that a different way. Okay, there's generally two kind of groups we can think of. There's the always zeros, is what I'm going to call them, okay, to give them a non-technical name. And the always zeros are what I've put in on this histogram or I guess the really histogram bar plot of the number of visits. Okay, so the, the red part are the always zeros and the happen to be zeros. Okay, and that's all the rest of them there. Okay, or maybe better ways to say this because they're not very technical terms is that often we see excessive zeros there's a group of people for which the event just does not occur. Okay, maybe it cannot occur. Okay, so we can think of, in this example, we're looking at the number of visits to a physician in a year. There's usually, there's probably a chunk of people that just do not go see a physician. There might be people that just think they don't need to see a doctor, or if we think of things in an American context with uh, the cost of going to see a doctor, maybe not having health insurance, you just aren't gonna go see a doctor. Okay, so this is kind of the, the idea is that excessive zeros or zero inflation happens when there's a large group of people for which the event just will not occur. And so the kind of informal language I'm using here is thinking of breaking these zeros into two groups. There's these people here who just would see a doctor or physician if they needed to, but they didn't need to that particular year. Okay. And the red I've tried to indicate as being the group of people who just will not go, okay, the kind of structural zeros or the always zero. We can take a look at the um, medical expenditures data, the number of visits to a physician in a year, to see if we have zero inflation going on there. So we've talked a little bit about the idea of excessive zeros or zero inflation. And let's take a look in our data and see if this is the case. To get an idea, we can look at a histogram of the number of visits to a physician in the past year. If we create that histogram, we can see that right here. Now it's quite difficult to look at this and see what's going on because the number of visits really tails out to the right, a really skewed distribution. So what I'm gonna do is make that histogram again, but asking, the, asking R to make the X axis go only from zero up to 20. So we can zoom in a little bit more and see what's happening. Now if we look here, we can see this nice sort of smooth looking curve shape and then at the zero, we see a big bump, or probably much more zeros than we'd expect for a nice smooth distribution. Again, if we take a look at a table of the 
number of visits to a physician, we can use the table command to see that. And again, this is going to be quite large if we look at that here. So what I'm going to ask R to do is show me just the first 15 entries of that table. Now again, here we can see the number of visits. If we start at four visits, there were 383. Going down to three visits, there were 420. Then two visits, um, 428. 481 people going only once, and then 683 going zero times. So again, we can see a big jump in zero, or more zeros than we'd expect um, for a Poisson distribution. So let's get back to discussing some of the solutions to dealing with this. So taking a look at the R data, or the medical expenditures data in R, we can see that there was excessive zeros or zero inflation. But there was a much larger number of zero visits than would be expected for a um, Poisson distribution. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit in concept about the common solutions okay, to dealing with this. The first two I'll mention are approaches that can work sometimes, but they're um, definitely not optimal approaches. Okay. So the first option is to classify as zero or not zero, and then fit a logistic model. So, for example, rather than looking at the number of visits, we can just dichotomize into, did you see a physician this year, yes or no? Right, so categorize as zero or not zero. Um, this approach can work, but it doesn't necessarily work um, in a lot of cases, so it depends on what our research question is. If our question is really about estimating the number of visits or the rate at which people visit, if we actually care about that, then this approach isn't going to tell us that. Right? So if we want to plan how many physicians do we need or um, something about expenditures, how many times are people going to go per year because um, it's going to have to be paid for, then this is actually not going to help us address the question. Right? This is just going to help us address does someone see a physician, yes or no, and what factors are predictive of that. So a second solution, again, less than optimal, in some cases it can work, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about why, why it's not always a great approach. You can remove the zeros, then fit a Poisson regression model. Okay, so the idea here, if you have Way too many zeros that just the theory for the Poisson, um, Poisson regression is falling apart. You can just remove all these zeros, get them out of the, the data set, fit a Poisson regression model to what remains. Again, this might work in certain circumstances, but again, you can imagine if your goal is really to estimate what is the average number of visits per year for different people, this is not going to help you with that because you're going to remove all the zeros, right? You're going to be removing an important part of the data. Let's get to talking about a third solution. And in a way, this is a combination of one and two. Okay, it tries to take these two solutions but make them a bit better. It's called zero inflated Poisson regression. Or sometimes it gets abbreviated as ZIP, okay, ZIP models. Zero inflated Poisson. What this is, is it's a two part model two-step model. Step number one is where you fit a logistic to try and predict if the person is a zero or a non-zero person. And again, that doesn't mean if they went or not. What we mean is taking all of these zeros and through logistic regression, trying to build a predictive model that tries to separate who are the people who happened to be a zero, okay, but would go if they needed to, they just didn't need to this year, versus who are the people that never go. So again, it's trying to separate the blue from the red. Build a logistic model that tries to predict um, who are the always zeros and who are the happened to be zeros. Okay. So what it's trying to do is get those red, um, predict who those red individuals are. Okay. In the second part, 
says to remove the kind of always. So maybe I should add a word here. Step one is using logistic to try and predict if they're an always zero person or a happen to be zero person. So try to predict through this red or this blue. Then what, what happens in step two is you remove the always zeros. So in other words, you're trying to remove that red part of the histogram or those individuals. Remove those and then fit a Poisson regression. the data that remains. So again, in theory what it's trying to do is get rid of these reds, these always zeros, get them out of there. In practice, what's going to happen is if it works well, you're going to hopefully remove a large portion of these. You're also going to end up removing a portion of these here, right? The blue happen to be zero people. So your model's not going to be able to perfectly discriminate with who would never go versus who did not need to go that year. Okay, but that's, that's well, on the surface, what a zero-inflated Poisson model is. Again, you can read a little bit more about this if you want. For the sake of our course and the assessment, what I would expect you to know is what zero inflation is, okay, what that means, um, and some of the common solutions, I guess, in concept. Okay, you're not going to be asked to implement them, but to be able to explain you know, in a, at a few sentence level of what a zero inflated Poisson model is. And then one more I'll mention again, I won't type about this one at all, but you can explore it if you want. It's another approach that gets used um, when there's zero inflation. It's called hurdle models. And again, it's a little bit different approach, but it's very similar to a zero inflated. Okay, it tries to, again, get rid of those structural zeros. Okay, so in the R script um, for this set of meetings, there is a whole bunch of code there that goes through and fits zero inflated Poisson models. Okay, so it takes the same data, fits a Poisson regression, a negative binomial regression, a zero inflated Poisson regression, and also a zero inflated negative binomial regression. Puts them all side by side, compares and contrasts them. That's there for you to explore on your own if you want. None of that part will be assessed, but it's there if you want to dig into these a bit deeper and learn a bit more about them. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.